The following podcast is brought to you by Pro Wrestling Connect, Australia's newest choice for event management and brand development specialising in pro wrestling. And now, now the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. podcast. Watch, watch global. global. Support local. local. It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. You podcast. The move. All right, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to another B Plus Podcast. I am your host, Greg Unchained. Today is Wednesday. You know what that means. It's time for the King of Sports cast. Joining me, as he does, to discuss the King of Sports universe, Ring of Honor, CMLL, and New Japan Pro Wrestling, also Rev Pro, occasionally. Big boy Mikey, how are you, brother? Universe, universe. Now, uh, good buddy. How you doing? I am well. <clears throat> I am well. I'm preparing for an inspection and stuff, and so like I'm trying to monster clean the house. And there's so much wrestling. Like Slammiversary was on yesterday that I, I've I've still like I'm ninety percent of the way through, and obviously the G1 kicking off. Man, it's yeah. it's a big time because AEW's got more around the corner and stuff as well. Right, this Saturday night is a. Uh... AEW versus WWE in a in a roundabout way for the first time, so that's going to be interesting. Yeah, uh, but uh, we've got some big news to kick off the show. I know that you wanted to sort of take the reins with this one, so I'll I'll let you uh, go ahead. I don't know much about this gentleman, so I will let you go ahead. Yeah, so uh, quite sad news to kick off the podcast. I mean, um, so the CMLL president uh, Francisco Luderoth, also known as Paco Alonso. Um, passed away uh, July 6th, so what, three days ago now, um, technically. Uh, yeah, so three days ago he passed away. Um, yeah, like, <clears throat> I mean, he's he's quite, he was quite old, like, you know, he was, uh, from illness, so that part wasn't so much of a shock, you know, it's not like he was a young guy or anything um, of that magnitude, but it's a legacy that uh, he leaves behind and the the impact that he made. So we're literally doing a King Sports podcast. And we like, you know, we talk about CMLL from time to time, Red Pro Ring Water. He's one of the um, one of the most important guys ever to build those relationships. He he took over the reins from his grandfather, I think it is, uh, Salvador Luteroth. Um, CMLL will do a homage to him every year um, in May. And anyway, so he took the homage from him um, I think it's early eighties or late seventies. And ever since then, he's the one that changed it from EMLL to CMLL. He, right. he bridged that relationship with, I'm guessing it was Inoki at the time in new Japan. Um, and those sort of guys in Japan at the time, he brought those relationships. He's the one that brought those guys like Liger to Mexico. He got guys like Tanahashi to Mexico, the NATOs, the, um, you know, building those relationships with Ring of Honor with um, with a whole host of promotions the CMLL has uh, dealt with. He's the businessman, and he's a really good promoter in the way that he doesn't stick his nose into the pro wrestling pro wrestling side of things. He's a businessman, and he lets his guys out. I'm sure Ultimate Guerrero is one of the main bookers there now in CMLL. He lets them do the wrestling stuff. He does all the business stuff. Um, and just seeing a lot of the... Uh, Reactions, especially the big one, um, Chris Jericho. Seeing how um, upset Chris Jericho was over it. I don't know if you've seen his uh, um, his video that he's uh, that he tweeted out the other day. He's like in tears. Like, I have not. No, no. He's like bawling his eyes out. Like um, he was the first guy to ever give Chris Jericho, you know, a job in North America. Um, and Chris Jericho was known as Corazon de Leon. Um, you know, he was. You know, he debuted with him and. A host of guys, you know, like Eddie, Chris Benoit, Dean Malinka, a lot of those guys with their first shot through uh, through Paco Alonso. So such an important... Like that piece, whole generation. That yeah. whole generation, um, not just in Japan, not just in Mexico, but in USA. So much uh, so much uh, history there with it. Um, yeah, and then they broke the news to the, uh, the Puebla crowd. Or I can't remember. Yeah, it must have been a Puebla crowd or Coliseo crowd uh, two nights ago. Um, some of the wrestlers weren't aware at the time, and they 
both the news in the ring live to the audience as well. You can see a lot of the wrestlers, like, they, they started crying, like, obviously behind their masks and that. Um, yeah, so obviously he had a big impact. And, yeah, so another one of those guys that, um, you know, has so much history. And, I mean, these Mexican legend names are just tr- dropping this year. It's ridiculous. So, you know, we've had Silver King. We've had um, just recently we had Paraguayo. Um, you know, uh, his son died a couple of years ago, but Paraguayo um, passed away recently. They're just dropping like flies at the moment. But, yeah, this one seems like a really uh, important one to talk about because it's just got such an importance to not just CMLL but to New Japan as well. Like, there is a huge Lucha influence. It's not just him. I guess someone like an Ultimo Dragon uh, was important to it as well, um, bridging that Japanese um, Lucha Libre style, the, the crossover. But, um, mm. but yeah, no, just uh, – yeah, I thought it'd be an important thing to talk about because, you know, he's uh, a very important man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And now our, our best wishes go out to anyone who's touched, obviously, by his death and uh, may he yeah. rest in peace. Moving on, we want to talk about, I know you talked about last week, best in the world. You gave the results and everything. I want to give a couple of my hot takes because I didn't get, I haven't had a chance to talk about it. I was hoping someone would ask on the call-in show. No one asked. And so here I am talking about best in the world. Man, this show was awfully booked. It was a good show. Like, bell to bell, Ring of Honor have a great roster. Obviously, we know the action's good. But no matter how many three-star matches you have, if the booking is shit, the show is shit. And this was a shit show. Uh, I mean, I mean, you said it, right? Jeff Cobb losing in a nine-minute match? Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. If he lost that nine-minute match to... Look, I know you're a Matt Taven fan. I was coming around, and I still don't mind him. Um, but if he lost that nine-minute match to a Jay Lethal or a or a Briscoe or something like that, that I don't know, like just, uh, just baffles me in anyway. Yeah. I, yeah. Poor booking. <laughs> <laughs> it's poor booking. Yeah. Poor booking. And that wasn't the only thing. Like, obviously you got all the crap with the Alua, and now they've got uh, Maria Manic coming in, I guess, to combat the Alua, but no one really knows who Maria Manic is. Like I'm, I'm, I've heard good things, but you really didn't do anything to show us anything. Um, what, Shane Taylor going over Bandito as well. It feels like they're just putting the titles on guys that aren't going to leave, right? Like Bandito is going to have interest from everyone else. So they're like, well, we can't really trust him because he's too much of a star. And that just makes you look second rate. Like fucking, if you've got the guy right now, run with him, make money off him, and then put the belt on someone else when he goes. Like don't don't bury these guys because you're like, well, you're going to go somewhere else eventually. That is fucking dumb. Yeah. Uh, that is one of the stupidest things. And I feel like that's what they're doing here. Like uh, if you have a look, we know Silas Young has has talked to WWE. So you've got Jonathan Gresham beating uh, Silas Young, which I mean, honestly, Jonathan Gresham is amazing. And I love Jonathan Gresham. And I probably would have put Jonathan Gresham over here anyway. But the way they did it with the semi heel turn or the crowd took it as a fucking heel turn anyway, because the whole point was, I want you in a pure rules match, Silas Young, because I want to beat you. I want to show that I can beat you when all your games are eliminated. I can beat you. And then he resorts to a low blow. Like, I don't know, man. The The whole show was uh, Flip Gordon joining Villain Enterprises. They've built this guy up as, you know, the lovable underdog troop baby face. Yeah. Now he's... And you know, now he's you know exactly what that is. That's an insurance policy for, um, for Villain Enterprises, you know, because... We know that once Marty's contract up, it doesn't mean he's going to AEW. You know, he could he could end up in NXT. Um, you know, very likely he could end up in NXT. But that's a that's a he could. But I think AEW. I think they're building up the librarians just so Marty Skull can come and break their fingers. Yeah, I see no other point to the librarians other than Marty Skull's big debut being him yeah. breaking their fingers. Like, what else? No, There's no point to them. You know what? Um, <laughs> You know, these days the whole relationship thing doesn't really matter too much. They uh, they all manage it. They live in the same city or whatever. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. So I don't know if um, uh, Diona will be any influence in it, getting him there. And especially he's very close to um, Adam Cole. You know, there was a post the other day of him hanging out with him mm-hmm. at a bar. And I was just like, oh, God, all right, okay. Um, yeah. So he could go I'm anywhere. guessing the flip thing is just an insurance policy. So... Flip becomes a new leader of um, Villain Enterprises when he leaves. I'm guessing that's, I mean, or you rename it. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I feel like Villain Enterprises will live on even in the absence of yeah. Marty Skull. 
I think that's their plan. I think that's why they're yeah, why they're bolstering yeah. the ranks. Yeah. But yeah, no, so yeah, like you said, like it's not like Ring of Honor aren't putting on uh, horrible matches. It's just booking is just weird. And yeah, it's good action, just awful. You know, you know, behind uh, the book, yeah. you know it's it's an unfortunate situation. Is probably the the best way to put it. But uh, what's not unfortunate is the G one has kicked off. Started in the United States at the what was it uh, Airlines Arena, Dallas, Texas. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome opening night for G one um, in Dallas. I don't know what the crowd ended up being. Um, I haven't. I haven't done my uh, homework on that part, but it seemed like it was a uh, a great turnout. Um, it looked good to me, but they had some of the lights down, and I think that's that. that like some of the back end of the yeah. arena was not. Uh, I mean, they chose a pretty yeah. big arena, like uh, American Airlines Center, where Dallas mm. Mavericks play NBA. It's not a small arena. I mean, it's pretty similar to Madison Square, so um, it was a big risk taking it there, especially with no mocks on the card, but. Um, Obviously, but um, but yeah, no, look, decent, really decent show. Um, obviously, we're not going to sit here and talking about undercard matches through any of this G one preview. You know what it's all about. Um, the other side of the car, the other side of the blocks, tagging with an undercard guy. They don't lose. They don't whatever. You know what I mean. Uh, so we're not going to go through that this year. We're just going to yeah, yeah. simply concentrate on A block and B block. Um, results and that. If anything major happens under on the undercards, we'll discuss it, but I doubt it. Uh, it never really does. Um, so, yeah, let's break down, I guess, the five tournament matches from um, from night one. So we open up with Will Ospreay versus Lance Archer. Um, I know in the Pickham's thing that I'm doing, everyone had Will Ospreay. I went Lance Archer. Yep. Really? Everyone I is dumb. Archer. Obviously, it was going to be Lance Archer because because Will Ospreay had the win in the New Japan Cup. This was and this is Lance Archer in his hometown. It's his opportunity to uh, to take the win and and sort of uh, get that win back over Will Ospreay as well as establish that he is going to be a force yeah. to be reckoned with in this tournament. Put some questions on Will Ospreay to make us want to root for him. And uh, you know, can the junior get it done? He didn't make it on the first night. I, I think it made perfect yep. sense. I was I picked yeah, Lance I, Archer. Yeah, all the way. I, I was the only one in the Pickhams. Um, mm-hmm. Including a, a referee that you've had on uh, on uh, on podcast recently, referee Nick. Just say his fucking name, man. Why do you always be so cool? I don't want to be referee mean, Nick. But anyway, yeah, yeah, cool. Everyone had Will Ospreay. I was the only one that went Lance Archer. Clear booking, clear correct booking, in my opinion. Um, I don't get the hate around Lance Archer. I, I, okay, I can understand people don't like that style in New Japan, but I love Lance Archer. Um, he has got such a mean streak about him. He he's even fixed up his look. He's got like a pink or red streak going down his hair now. Uh, he's he's grown it. Yeah, look, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Um, now that Killer Elite Squad aren't really a thing, I'm I'm here yeah. for some solo Lance Archer. I think he can fit that role really well. But uh, I, I think his matches with Will Ospreay are the only great matches yeah, I've ever seen from well. him. Yeah, that's Will Ospreay. And that's Will Ospreay. But like, um, you know? Lance Archer is a good Baron Corbin. Is that a weird take? He's a really good version of Baron Corbin. Like, he's everything that Baron Corbin should be. Just a big, really just imposive guy that just, I don't know, every time that he walks out, scares the shit out of me. Like, he walks out, just beats up two, um, two young lions on the side, just straight up, pissed off, just, you know, I'm just like, Fantastic. Um, so, yeah, so Lance Archer goes 1-0, and and Will Ospreay starts with a loss. Next matchup was, unfortunately, my only match that didn't get a four-star. Everything got a four-star above me on Grapple. Um, download that Grapple app. There's my plug. <laughs> yes. Good plug. Good plug. Getting the plugs in. Grapple app. I am at Greg Unchained. You are B plus underscore big boy. Follow us on there for all our match ratings, yeah. obviously. So my match rating for Osprey Archer was four. Four or something a little bit above. But four, uh, this was the one that was a little bit below Evil and Bad Luck Fale. Um, with Bad Luck Fale picking up the victory here. This is the only one that I got wrong in my pickings for this night. Um, 
I did not see Farley pick up a victory this early straight away. I thought maybe he'd get a sneaky win or two through the uh, through the stretch of the tournament. But yeah, um, Evil drops a loss straight up. Which, um, they like to keep Bad Luck Farley strong in these. So I would have picked yeah. Bad Luck Farley for sure, I think. Uh, moving on, though, we had Sonata and Zack Sabre Jr. These two always put on good That's, matches. I really enjoy totally Sonata versus Sonata, Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, counters Zack Sabre Jr., um, to the point where Zach Sabre Jr. doesn't have an answer for him sometimes. And it's, I, I love that. Um, I love his post-match comments about um, technical wrestling. Showing technical wrestling to the Americans is like reading Shakespeare to Americans or something like that. Um, he's just, uh, God, I love that guy on commentary. He's just, he's so real. Like, I'm pretty sure that's 99% real, Zach Sabre Jr. Like, <laughs> Pretty sure that's just him talking. It's not like a character or anything. He's just a he's just a royal douche, and I love it. Um, yeah, so Sonata picked up the win here with the uh, cheeky little uh, bridge bridge pin on him. Um, yeah, so Sonata goes one and zero. Zach Saber starts with a loss. The next match though was um, was one with a move called Go to Sleep, but this one was not a match to sleep through because holy shit. I think the world. Yeah. Kenta, Kenta is, is back. back. Forget about Baby. Hideo Itami. Let's just forget that ever happened in his career. This is Kenta. Um, yes, obviously, he's lost a little bit of a step through a couple of injuries, but he showed nothing of that on this match. Oh, my God. Um, I got this match right. I picked Kenta. Um, yeah, Kota Ibushi starts with a loss, but um, yeah, Kenta just looked really good here. Um, I gave this a four star on grapple. Uh, great match, great match. And then the next match, uh, the headliner, the big one, the big one that's famous every year, whether it's a final or whether it's a group match. Akata Tanahashi, rivals for about ten years. They're best of friends at the moment, but they still went out and put on a classic. Not a five star. Not a not a Akata Tanahashi, two thousand and sixteen seventeen style, but or even. 18, they got a five-star, I'm pretty sure. Um, but this was great in itself. A uh, standing ovation before the match had even started um, on the entrances. Uh, it just shows you how big these two guys are in Japan. Akata picked up the win here with the Rainmaker. Um, to be expected, I don't, th- I don't think Akata's going to drop a lot in this tournament. Um, I think he'll be there in the final two or three. Um yeah, this was fantastic. Uh, it, it was a really good match. Uh, I'm pretty sure I get. I'm pretty sure I get this a four yeah. grapple too. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. This month we are sponsored by Grapple, a fantastic new wrestling app available on iOS and Google Play, completely for free, where you can rate all the matches that you watch in WWE, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling all across the world, and we are even getting Australian wrestling involved in the Grapple App rating system as well, starting with PWA Pro Wrestling Australia. Uh, Their green label event from the other week is up there. The black label event, All Eyes on Troy, is up there. And the last two years of events, at least, are up on Grapple right now for you to rate so that people can get around our Aussie wrestling and see that we are just as good as anywhere else in the world. Basically, Grapple is a rotten tomatoes for wrestling now we all get a say it is the democratization of match rating systems for pro wrestling it's amazing so uh, i get a say you get a say uh, you can follow me on there at greg unchained you can follow uh big boy mikey at b plus underscore big boy at mr mysterious is on there at danders is on there at j is on there we're all on there rating the matches that we watch uh, so follow us. We'll follow you back. Let's build this community and get uh, as many Australian wrestling fans onto the Grapple app as we can. You can download it right now. It has over 30,000 matches on there going back to 1985, 15 promotions around the world. There's so much to do on the Grapple app. It's a great little community, so get around it. It's Grapple, G-R-A-P-P-L dot C-O, and uh, it's for free on, on App Store and Google Play. Get around it. Hey everyone, just want to take a second to tell you about one of our new sponsors, Outbreak Nutrition. Outbreak Nutrition are creating supplements for survival, sharper minds, quicker reflexes, all the energy you need to take your performance to the next level, whether that be on the field, in the gym, 
on the gaming field. That's right. They have specifically designed gaming supplements as well to help you focus on those late night sessions. They even sell coffee, you guys, at Outbreak Nutrition. You can get coffee pods. You can get coffee beans. You can get supplements for the bedroom as well if you want to enhance your performance there. These are performance enhancing supplements for every aspect of your life specifically designed by gamers for gamers to stay fit and healthy in the gym, to stay sharp and focused on the game, and to dominate in all areas of life. So check out OutbreakNutrition.com, and for being a listener of our podcast, they will give you 10% off your order when you enter the code B+. That is B-P-L-U-S at checkout. So make sure if you want to stay on top of your game, if you want to take your performance to the next level, OutbreakNutrition.com, enter the code B+, at checkout. Hey guys, just a reminder, if you want to hear all of these wonderful B Plus podcast episodes completely ad-free, make sure you head over to Patreon or Podbean, where we are the featured podcast this week. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar a month, up to $10 a month, where anything you want to help us with, it really helps out. It's going to help us grow the site. It's going to help us redesign some things. And everything that we get through this and through the advertising as well is all going straight back into the podcast so that we can get Aussie Graps out there for the rest of the world to hear about, for the rest of the world to see, so we can grow this mission of watch global, support local, and build indie wrestling. So if you want to be a part of that and get some really cool rewards like call-in shows, bonus episodes, ad-free like I mentioned, then head over to patreon.com slash the B plus and subscribe today. Yeah, no, I was at a solid four for the last couple of matches here. It was, it, yeah, it was, it was definitely a great match. Uh, Akata picking up the win. You expect that. I, I expected that. Uh, definitely. Now, how do you feel about the order of these matches? Obviously, Akata versus Tanahashi, it's a legendary match and that's why they've put it on last, but I felt like Abushi and Kenta could have easily oh, yeah. closed. Any it other sure. time that you didn't have Akata Tanahashi, it would have closed. Um, and just the fact that, like I just said, they got a standing ovation before they even, before they even wrestled was, I guess, why you had to put them on last, but um, yeah, I mean they're both main events. I mean you just had a double main event. Well, the crowd were the crowd were amazing for this. Like they were hot for like they, you know, I mean they were able to milk the lockup through a massive yeah. crowd cheer. You know what I mean? Uh, the crowd were hot for this. They were like, we're getting this in America. This is a real New Japan show, which is something that American fans have wanted for a long time. Australia too, just getting a real New Japan show. And they were hot for it. They were hot for the whole yeah. thing. It was a really great crowd the entire night. But specifically for this match, exactly. you noticed. And it. I did lie. Sorry, I gave four stars to Archer and Osprey, four stars to Sonata, Zack Saber, four stars for Kota Ibushi and Genta, two stars for Evil and um, Fale, and I gave four point five for Akata Tanahashi on Grapple. But yeah, um, opening night yeah. done and dusted. Yeah, um, I like that the opening night was sort of done and then we can have a week break before the real shit kicks in <laughs> yeah and then it's going to be every fucking yeah, night so this almost. weekend starts with three so there's only three nights before we get on the podcast next week which is nice so um which kicks off is it saturday i want to want to say saturday saturday sunday monday yes yeah, saturday sunday monday so um, we get on podcast next week and then the next match won't be until Thursday. So let's break it down. Are you ready? I am. I am. I am ready to provide predictions that will probably be yeah, way, well, way off. Yeah, let's hit it. All right. So Saturday night, start um, start with block B. B block. Get start of B block. Night. Yeah, Correct. first night for B block. So we have... Starting off the match, I don't know if this is in the order. I'm pretty sure um, when they set it out, this is the order. But uh, So opening, Juice Robinson versus Shingo Tagagi. Shingo just coming off the best of Super Juniors tournament. Juice Robinson uh, coming off losing his... Uh, well, no, it's been a while since he lost that title. But yeah, um, mm. yeah, this is going to be... A... It's not that long ago. Was it the best of Super Juniors finals? Yeah, so we've only had a yeah, couple yeah. of shows. Yeah. Um, but yeah, brilliant opening match. I'm going Shingo with this. Yeah, I think that similar to the Will Ospreay thing, I think that Juice wins and it's it's just establishing that, hey, just because these guys are coming up into this tournament doesn't mean that yeah. they're going to win, right? I would like to see Shingo one. My heart my heart says Shingo wins, but but I, I really think Juice Robinson gets the, the only reason I'll give, my, I'll give my reason why I'm going Shingo, 
I think only because Shingo's only really had what one loss since his debut. Is it one loss? Two. I think it was, I think it's only one in the tournament final, right? Yeah. Uh, one, I yeah, one, just think, the one, just when he lost the, yeah, yeah, the finals. I don't think they're going to give him his second loss straight away. Obviously, he's going to lose one or two in the G1. Uh, that's going to happen. But I don't know if it's going to be against Juice. So that's the only reason I'm hesitant. Will Ospreay's had, you know, a, hand, like, a whole bunch of losses in his career. So um, I'm just going to go with Shingo on this just for the fact I just don't think he starts like a losing streak or, losing streak or anything. I expect him to maybe drop a loss to... A Moxley or a NATO somewhere like that, or Ishii, but not Juice. I love Juice, but I don't think he's good enough to do, continue Shingo's losing streak as such. So, um, singles losing streak. Um, yeah, so yeah, mm. right, you got Juice. I'm going Shingo. That's I like that. Um, Moxley Taichi is up next. Um, Moxley wins. Moxley wins. He's the biggest star in wrestling right now. How fucking crazy would it be if Taichi got his first victory in a G1 against Moxley? No. We know it's not going to happen. I'm going Moxley. Not happening. But think of that scenario for Taichi. Holy shit. But anyway, it's Moxley. (laughs) Yeah. It's Moxley. Yeah. It's an odd first match for Moxley, I think. I I, I thought you you want to put Moxley in there first up on the first night of B-Block action against like your Naitos or your Ishii's or your Goto's. Someone where he can have a banger of a match that shows us He's ready for this new Japan G1 style. Uh, going up against Tai Chi, I, I kind of have low expectations yeah. for this match. I don't think it would be a wrestling match of sorts. It would be uh, Moxley taking him into the uh, new Japan crowd and um, and the referee letting everything go for a while because it's uh, you know Suzuki Gun versus Moxley. So I'm sure Taka will be on Tai Chi's corner or something like that. Um, but yeah. Uh, Moxley easy with a, with his victory, unless it's a dirty countout style. But no, Moxley for the win. Um, speaking of dirty countout styles, the next matchup: Yano Naito. Um, no, yeah, no, Naito means wins never, ever, ever count out Yano ever for anything. No, Yano can get yeah, Yano yeah. can get a win at any time, but I don't absolutely, think this, no, this is absolutely the time. Not, no. um, <laughs> My, I, I think Naito is winning the G1. So I'm 99% going to be picking Naito through this whole thing. I, it, it's his time. Naito, yeah. Carter, Wrestle Kingdom, give it to me, please. Um, yeah, so I'm going Naito in this. It should be a good match. Yana's, you know, that cheeky guy, kind of like a, um, you know, throwback little heel. But um, this will be good. The next match is what I am looking forward to the most on this night, though. Tama Hiro yes, Ishii too, versus actually. Jeff Cobb. New Japan, please book Jeff Cobb a little bit better than Ring of Honor do. Um, obviously, they, obviously they do. Um, <laughs> this is just going to be big boy versus big boy. Just not much height on either of them. They're both relatively small guys in height, but they're just big and bulky boys. Uh, I just, I'm so excited for this. This is going to be one hell of a match. Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I think that uh, yeah, Ishii goes with over the G1 though. Experience, yeah. uh, I know you want, I know you want uh, Jeff Cobb, but I think that uh, Ishii is the G1 stalwart. He's the one that you, you give. Yeah, the I'm sitting here wearing a Jeff Cobb shirt doing this podcast. Um, a brand new Jeff Cobb shirt that I picked up from him at World Series Wrestling. Uh, but I am going to go Ishii just because of that G1 experience. That Ishii has and nice. Goto versus Jay White headlines this night. Interesting. Um, I think Jay White wins, but Goto's going to give him a hell of a fucking match as well. Um, a lot of people sleep on Goto. Yeah. Yes. I think Jay yes. White wins um, this Well, one, I'm picking actually. White uh, for my pickums, but um, I expect this match yeah. to, go, to be drawn out quite long. Um, there's a lot of people sleep on Goto. Um, He's one of those forgotten guys in chaos these days. It's all about um, the Carter and Osprey and Ishii, I guess, and, and those guys. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Moving Absolutely. on to night two, uh, we have back to the A block action: Lance Archer and Bad Luck Fale. I actually think yeah, Lance Archer wins another one. Obviously, yeah. this is not going to be a uh, uh, a four star four star match at any cost. It's probably going to be a two at best. I picture, picture Lance Archer going over here, like you said. Um, I think he's going to start out strong. Uh, he'll look good. He'll pick up, start picking up some losses against some bigger names soon, um, which would be great. 
the next match is mouthwatering. I don't think they've ever had a one on one. Will Ospreay versus Sonata. Um, I'd have to check the record books of one on ones, but this is a great one on one. Uh, and I picture, I think Sonata goes over and Will Ospreay goes 0 2. I don't think Ospreay can beat Sonata. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if Lance Arch is beating Will Ospreay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I'm with you. I think I think I will yeah. pick Sonata in this one. Uh, the only person I picture Will Ospreay beating is Zack Sabre Jr. That's only because he's used to it. And maybe Kota Ibushi because he has beaten him. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to Sonata. Next matchup, Akata, Zack Sabre Jr., um, New Japan heavyweight champion, British heavyweight champion, one on one. Akata wins, um, but this is going to be a brilliant match. Hell of a match. Akata, Zack Sabre Jr., I love this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Akata wins. Akata wins, yeah. obviously, in this one. <laughs> like, you're not going to, not going to love Zack Sabre Jr., but I don't think they see him as an upset here. Yeah. Because <laughs> I mean, it's Akata. Uh, I was going to say, because Koda... no, if you see, if you think about it, his block, Akata's already beat Tanahashi, so Tanahashi's usually the guy that you can kind of go, ooh, that's where Akata might drop the loss. He's already taken that down. The only other two guys I can see beating Akata in the tournament is Koda or Kenta now. Um, I don't think anyone else could beat him mm. in the group. I mean, Sonata, Sonata's yeah. come close in the past. Um, Evil's come close in the past. Will Ospreay's come close in the past, but I, I don't think... I mean, Akata hasn't lost to too many people in his whole career, but one on one. Maybe Ooh, Lance Archer. Maybe that, Lance Archer gets an upset. Um, but yeah, so next up, yeah. Kota Ibushi, Evil. Both guys um, needing a win to get off the uh, board here. Um, I, I, it has to go with Kota Ibushi. You can't imagine Kota Ibushi going 0-2, nor can I expect Evil to go 0-2, but I'm going to have to go with Kota Ibushi on this one. Yeah, uh, I think Kota Ibushi uh, definitely gets a gets a win here uh, over Evil. I, I, I think they've obviously got big things in plan for Kota Ibushi, and I've got Kota Ibushi, I think, making yeah. it to the finals. Yeah. So Kota Ibushi. And then we rounded off with Tanahashi Kenta, the ace of um, ace of New Japan versus the ace of Noah. Uh, fuck. Um, imagine this match 10 years ago. Um, well, the Sawa is going to be smiling down on this one. Um yeah. Yeah. Who do you, this is a tough one though. Do you think Kenta gets I'm the gonna w? Go, No, I'm going to my pick him, my head goes to Tanahashi. Only because Tanahashi does not start 0 and 2 in G1. And Tanahashi's mm. I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with Tanahashi, but fuck I me, mean, you could you could go with Kenta going completely undefeated in this whole thing and literally going on a tear, but I just can't see Tanahashi losing two in a row. Yeah. No, I don't see Tanahashi losing either. I, well, actually, no, you know what? I'm going to go with Kenta. I'm going to go with the upset yeah. victory here. Isn't it funny that um, I know like through the pickings that I'm, that I'm doing, people have already booked the entire G1. It's like, I can't do that. I have to book every second. Every second no, night. I struggle I with every doing second that. Night, yeah. Once you know a result. So like now we know like <laughs> block B opening night. We have no idea about what's going to really go down. Block A, night two, you kind of get a feel of, you know, you don't expect a card to be, uh, uh, Tanahashi to be 0 and 2. You know, Kota Ibushi is not going to be 0 and 2. You, you kind of know when you kind of look at it. But um, Block A is just a really strong group. I know Block B has got some great talent in there, obviously, but Block A is a really good group. I mean,. Yeah, There's eight potential world heavyweight champions in there one day. Like Will Ospreay, Sonata, Okada, Zack Sabre, Ibushi, Evil, Tanahashi, Kenta. I mean, holy shit. Um, and I just left out Farley and Archer, but still. Um, anyway. And then we move on to night three, which is Monday. Um, yeah, Monday back to block B. So we're sort of booking this on the fly in our heads because, you know, we've sort of booked what we thought would be block one, uh, block B's night one results. So based on what we kind of already thought about block B night one, uh, as a B block night two, um, Monday night, Yano versus Shingo Tagagi. Um, this is where Shingo gets his victory back. Uh, sorry, Shingo continues his victories, continues his wins here for me. Yeah, no, uh, Shingo, Shingo gets a win um, here, definitely. 
Next match on the card, uh, Juice versus Hiroki Goto. I'm pretty sure these two were both in the same group last year. This is a matchup. Um, yeah, so in my B Block Night 1, I have both of these going, guys going 0 1. So I'm going to go with Hiroki Goto picking up the victory here. And unfortunately, Juice goes 0 2. I know Juice had a terrible time of it last G1. I'm pretty sure he, that was his story last year. I think it happens again. I think he struggles again. Um, Goto here um, goes to 2 and uh, one-on-one for me. Yeah. Uh, for this one, I'm thinking uh, Juice Robinson gets a win over Hiroki Goto. I think Juice yeah, is going to have a yeah. pretty strong G1, to be honest with you. I love it how we got, we're going in separate ways for Juice. <laughs> yeah, we're going separate ways a lot. Uh, a lot. Next match yeah. is going to be a beauty. Holy crap. Jeff Cobb versus John Moxley. Um, this is going to be something a little bit different. Um Obviously, Moxley is a very good wrestler when he needs to be. Um, but, yeah, how is he going to handle Cobb? I think Moxley wins this, but it's going to be a very interesting matchup. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one because just of the uh, difference in styles, it's going to be different. Yeah. Uh, I think, again, again, I don't know that this can be a G1 match, if you get what I mean, right? Like, I'm, I'm concerned about John Moxley and the G1 style. And so I really want to see him tear it up with one of the G1 classic guys to give us a feel. Uh, so I, I don't know how to go on this match. I don't know. But I think John yeah, Moxley like, picks up. I really want to see him wise. against like Ishii and Goto and those sort of guys. So it'd be interesting. Tai Chi and Jeff Cobb, um, first two matches for him are very interesting. But um, I guess there's a soft entry to the tournament. Not soft. Cobb's no Cobb's no slouch. She's one of the best bloody wrestlers. No, but it's like like a, yeah, an introduction exactly, yeah. to the New Japan audience. Imagine Moxley so. and Ishii night one or something. That would have been brilliant. Oh, my God. Anyway. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm going Moxley on that. Next up, speaking of Ishii, Ishii and Jay White. Um, I'm going to go with Ishii going 2-0 in this because uh, I don't think Jay White can beat Ishii unless uh, the likes of Gato get involved and help beat um, Jay White here. But, yeah. I'm going to go with Ishii. Yep, uh, I think Ishii yeah. gets a win over Jay White. This is so hard to do, man, because I'm trying to look forward as well. I'm trying to look forward and see how the points will stack up because I think Jay White ends up in more contention than Ishii. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I pick Ishii here. And then in the main event, Naito versus Taichi. Pretty oh, clear. Yeah. Naito wins, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Naito's going to clean the floor with him. Um, Moxley's going to do some damage to Taichi on Saturday night. Naito would just pick up the spoils on Monday night. Um, the extra spoils. But yeah, Nato goes 2-0 and for me. Easily here, but yeah, that's the uh, first week of uh, G1. It all kicks off Saturday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, have you got anything else around the universe? I know our girl um, Shazza McKenzie debuted over in uh, Red Pro uh, at a cockpit show in, in a losing fashion, but she debuted nonetheless. Got a lot of uh, PWA guys and Aussie guys doing Red Pro lately. Yeah. No, that's all I got, man. That's all I got. Where can people find you if they want to follow you on the social medias? Hey, yeah, you can find me at B plus underscore big boy or Loco for Lucha on Twitter and Facebook. And I am at Greg Unchained on Twitter, at the Greg Unchained on Instagram. We collectively are the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit. The B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, five star review if you like what we do. And thank you so much for listening.